We're going to catch a lot of fish today, and this is a technique that Jim pioneered seven or eight years ago at Rainy Lake. And since that time, a lot of these tournaments on these big waters up in, in Sunset Country have been one catching suspended smallmouth. So it's a good way to get big fish, big numbers of fish. Oh boy, we're right here, Jeff. There's a whole bunch of them. Yeah. Holy mackerel. Somebody's going to get bit. You know, this technique is, really is applicable to a wide range of different bodies of water across the country. Uh, but the real key is deep water forage. In this lake here, we're fishing, it's a smelt. It could be tulabies, it could be shad in southern reservoirs, but you need large populations of deep water forage that really sort of sets the uh, events up of how it gathers these large schools of bass on these deep water structures. For the majority of the year, food is the determining factor of predatory fish in all waters. Seasonally, fish can take advantage of a wide variety of prey. You name it, insects, crayfish, and minnows are all on the menu. The habitat preference and the amount of these different types of prey ultimately dictate the location of game fish. In the North Country lakes, smallmouth bass love to feed on open water baitfish, specifically large schools of tulabies and smelt. Interestingly, when these fish are tuned in on open water baitfish, the traditional techniques like bottom bouncing tubes and crankbaits don't work. These fish are literally programmed to feed on suspended minnows. If your bait is not moving high in the water column, you simply don't get bit. Suspending soft baits like this closely resembles their food preference at this time. Yeah, you can see they're sort of short and squat. They look different. Oh man, whole pack of deepies. You know, right now we're in. This is how deep I'm fishing. That's how deep you're, you're fishing. Drop the bait down. Actually, a lot of times we're fishing just out of your line of sight. Something's gonna happen here in a matter of seconds. Watch this. We're just, look at it. There are fish all over. Loop, fly by. The odd thing is, is a lot of times when you're doing this and you're just holding the bait suspended and you feel like little bumps like that, and you think they're dinky bass, and do you know what they are? They're big bass swimming by the bait and they're not really biting it. They're swim, they're coming up and looking at the bait and missing it? Drive-by. Drive-bys, yeah, or fly-bys, yeah. <laughs> the, the real interesting part of this, too, is you'll, we'll actually pull fish 20 feet that'll come up, and you can watch them on the sonar come up and grab the bait. These, these bass, as long as you have generally pretty clear water, they can see and know your baits are way better than you, than you think. I think one of the biggest things is also is, is getting the relative height of where the fish are willing to bite the bait. You don't want to, like a lot of times, most bass anglers, when they see the fish down on their, their electronics, what they do is they drop the bait right down to them. What we're doing is we're holding the bait above them a distance and forcing the fish to come up and strike the bait. And that's a big, par big part of it. This is why it's so hard for people to do this, because we're actually not jigging. It's, you hold that thing there, let it hover, and you get a bite and it feels like a bluegill a lot of time. It's yeah. nothing, and, but when you set the hook, it's like, Oh, wow, he wakes you up in a hurry, you know. Ah, uh, it's real high. That was really real high. Look at it. Oh, yeah, he's got at, another great big one there. There's a big, See, big look fish. At, look at like that. Three, three inches under the surface here. One thing about these smallmouths is they, uh, when you get them out on these, when they're suspended like this, they're not by themselves. They're uh, no, they're grouped up. Well, that's the that's the interesting thing. This is like what you're talking. This big schools of these fish. I mean, tremendous schools of, of bass. And it's uh, once we actually got on this technique and we started messing around, it took a number of years for guys to really fine tune it. And a big part of it is the presentation, the subtlety of the presentation. You know what I mean? We, as you'll see, what we're doing, we're literally taking. This is a Trigger X minnow, and it's on a. Uh, a smooching head, with, and what you want this bait to do is just hover vertically above the fish. 